recently it's been in the news that four children, including an autistic child, were suspended from their school after damaging a Quran. To me, this is ridiculous. I don't know about you, Darren. Does this mean that we have blasphemy laws in the UK? Well, absolutely, Jess. I mean, you take into account what Labour politicians have actually been saying about this. Uh, a Labour councillor, Usman Ali, he released a statement in which he, he claimed, it's now been deleted by the way, but he released a statement in which he claimed that the Quran had been desecrated, and which isn't actually what the reports tell us. They say it was scuffed, a slight scuff to this religious text, and that all the authorities, Jess, namely the police, the, the school and the local authority, should be taken swift and appropriate action. Now, if you ask me, Jess, that's an outrageous thing for a Labour politician to actually suggest, and he ought to be suspended from that party if it's a party that believes in, in secularism, in, in actually not bringing about blasphemy laws in Britain. And I don't think these kids ought to have been suspended from school at all. I certainly don't think that the police ought to have been involved in that press conference that we saw. It It is absolutely absurd, Jess. It has taken Britain backwards, not forwards. I mean, being a part of a secular society, as a Muslim, you can hold any belief you want to believe, as long as it doesn't mean that other people have to live by it too. As someone who's atheist, I shouldn't have to be forced to follow Christianity, for example. So why has this kid had to follow the rules of Islam, even though he's not Islamic? And to see that press conference, it was absolutely shocking. You know, the way the council described, I think he said, like, passions had fled. When it came to people sending death threats to this autistic child, I mean, to me, I don't know about you, but to me, I think sending death threats to a child is way worse than damaging a Quran. It's ridiculous. Absolutely. It is. I mean, can you imagine if this was a Church of England school, Jess, and some kids had scuffed a Bible? Do you really suppose that some Tory councillor in a cosy little parish in Middle England is going to be calling for a swift suspension of the child and that that child would go on to receive death threats and, you know, threats to his safety. I don't think so. And it's because Britain isn't a nation that has blasphemy laws, not even for our established church. It's really, really quite troubling that a, a smudge on a book, essentially, that's what we're talking about here, could even get the police to actually be involved in the first place, to actually waste police time over this issue. Our nation has become so paralysed, Jess. This is what it is. This is how serious it is. It has become paralysed by fear of being accused of Islamophobia, that it's abandoned its values in what was a once free nation, which cherished freedom of thought, freedom of speech, freedom of association. But we see in so many ways, look at the Batley Grammar School teacher, right? That being one of them. A, kid, a, a teacher, rather, that showed kids a cartoon. And you see that blasphemy laws are back in Britain. And I say to hell with it, Jess, for want of a better word. You can accuse me of whatever you want. If we don't defend these values, we take ourselves back, back to a time when Britain was less free and have more in common with Iran's sodden Ayatollah than we do with a purported liberal democracy. This ought to be, Jess, and I say this with all sincerity, this ought to be a massive alarm bell for how illiberal and frankly dangerous our nation is becoming in the pursuit of combating so-called Islamophobia. Because scuffing a book in Britain isn't an offence. Issuing threats very much is. And if you don't like it, Jess, there are other countries around the world that you can go to, as far as I'm concerned. I want to know is why are children always being sacrificed for the sake of political correctness? With this situation, with the grooming gangs being covered up for fears of inciting Islamophobia, the situation with Dover West school children having to process the sexual harassment assault because the authorities won't take it seriously. With Tavistock, with Drag Queen Story Hour, a, a news report came out today that um, children were being taught that there's 73 genders and being taught how to masturbate, how to perform mm -hmm. oral sex, showing the intricacies of gender reassignment surgery. Why are children being sacrificed with this? 
And it's also incredibly contradictory, Jess, because it one in one sentence they we're talking about issues around Islam and religion and how much uh, the politicians are terrified and others, you know, it's not just politicians, it's other people in positions of power. The school obviously was as well, as well as the police. People are so terrified of being accused of Islamophobia that they, they don't dare put a foot wrong. And then at the same time, you, you've just been talking about all the trans stuff that's running rampant through our schools. Well, the two things aren't compatible because you've got the people who, you know, if, if they care so much about the Quran, I very much doubt that they're going to want their kids to be taught about masturbation and about gender identity and all this new madness in schools. And that that sort of incompatibility hasn't ever really been addressed. And, you know, it's st the same with the Hamza Yusuf uh, story as well, apart from uh, around the, the same sex marriage debate, which he didn't vote for. And you start to see that actually the left has been the champion, the bulwark of of much of, of, of this revamped push to, to combat Islamophobia in Britain. Yet most of the left's values would be rejected in a heartbeat, right? By if you are a radical Islamist. So I, yeah, I, I think the left is going to eventually come to a crossroad, Jess. I really, really do.